uh, myself Arti. I'm a non-Muslim. I'd like to ask a question that, uh, first of all, very thanks for uh, your and giving me this opportunity to listen to you and understand Mus Islam. Uh, what I understood from your talk is mainly that it's a religion which believes in peace and harmony and uh, scientific and rational beliefs. If it is so, then how does it believe in the whole idea of God and how does it believe the whole idea of heaven or the hell, if it's so rational? Sultan has a question that she's heard the lecture. She's very happy to know Islam is a religion of peace. And it's a scientific religion, it's a rational religion. She's asking that if Islam is a rational religion, then how come it believes in God? It believes in heaven and hell. Sister, the only way you can believe in God is through science. Today, if I have to prove to an atheist, the only way I can prove is through the Quran with the help of science. The best tool I've got today. Previously, it was miracles. Then came the age of literature and poetry. Every age, Quran is a miracle of miracles. It's a miracle of all times. So because of this, if you heard my talk, I've proved that because a person who believes in science, if he's rational, he will have to agree that Quran is the word of God. If he does not believe in science, if he's not rational, if he's not understanding, there's high chances he will not believe in the Quran. That's the reason I said today, science is not eliminating God, it is eliminating models of God. As far as science is concerned, the concept of God, most of the scientists, they believe in the existence of God today. Previously, according to Francis Bacon, it says that little knowledge of science makes you an atheist, but in-depth knowledge of science makes you a believer in God. Now coming to your second question about heaven and hell. Now if you analyze the Quran, whatever the Quran speaks about science, approximately you can say that 80% of what the Quran speaks about science has been proved to be 100% correct. About the creation of the universe, about the shape of the earth, light of the moon, that the sun rotates and revolves, water cycles, geology, botany, etc. 80% of what the Quran speaks about science is 100% proved to be correct. The remaining 20%, it goes in the ambiguous slot. Neither right, neither wrong. So my logic says, when 80% is 100% correct, and the remaining 20% is neither right, neither wrong, not even 0.1% of the 20% have been proved to be wrong, my logic says that inshallah, God willing, even that 20% will be right. So heaven and hell, angels, jinn, science hasn't advanced that far. Today science has advanced maybe to understand 80% of the Quranic verses we speak about science. Tomorrow, maybe 50 years later, 100 years later, 200 years later, science will talk about heaven, will talk about hell, will talk about jinn. So my logic says it's not an illogical belief. It's a logical belief when 80% is 100% correct and the remaining 20%, not even 0.1% is wrong. No scientist today can say that he can prove scientifically there is no hell. No scientist today can prove scientifically there is no heaven. He can say, I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it is not. It is ambiguous. So my logic says when 20% is ambiguous, neither right, neither wrong, when 80% 100% correct, I being a scientific person, I being a rational person, I say that inshallah, God willing, even that 20% will be correct. That's the reason I believe in hell, I believe in heaven, and I also believe in the angels and the jinn. Hope that answers the question. Uh, I, I still have some clarification. I need some clarification. Anything connected with the same question? Yes, yeah. Actually, you said that science also follows or believes in God, or also Islam do that. Then what is the exact explanation that is that it has given? For God or for he heaven or hell? Sister, did you hear my full talk? Yeah. Did you hear my talk which I gave earlier last week? Is the Quran God's word? No, sir. Fine. This is my first talk. So in this talk, I spent 15 minutes trying to repeat in a nutshell what I spoke in two hours. What I request you, you take my video cassette recording, is the Quran God's word, and I've proved there that Quran is God's word, and also proved to an atheist the existence of Almighty God, which I did today in a nutshell, but in a fast way. So I've proved that God has to exist. If God did not exist, who wrote this Quran? 
Who wrote this Quran 1400 years ago? Talking about. My question is also. Then who wrote this Quran? Who wrote it? The Creator wrote it. God wrote it. No human being can write. Sorry. What is the explanation for that? The explanation is my talk of two hours, sister. You can take the video cassette and the similar talk I'd given in Bombay in 1995. And I'd request some of the volunteers, the lady volunteer, to give you a copy of my talk, which I said in 1995 in Billa Matushri. Take that talk. Inshallah, it will give you more details about the explanation of God as well as the existence of God and Quran is the word of God. Hope that answers the question.